What's up, carpoolers? Welcome back to another episode of Riding Shotgun with Corduroy Paco. Hmm. Let's give this young man a lift. Hey. Hey. Well, well, none other than Jim Valen. How's it going, Jim? Good, man. How you doing? Good, good. So, uh, what have you been up to? Uh, well, beyond making just every interactive video that I can possibly think of, um, I've just been relaxing as much as I possibly can, which is very little. Yes, yeah, so you're coming off right now, super busy time. Oh, it's super busy time. I mean, uh, October was just crazy, crazy busy making, you know, the Halloween adventure and then making, you know, editing and preparing a couple of other things that are coming up. We've got Chimera coming up December 12th. Plug, what? Being a YouTuber, man, it's, 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 it's busier than you might think. Yeah, it, I have to say, that is very true. You think vlogs or short films or whatever you're into, it's like, yeah, I'll just shoot it, throw it up. But then if you want it to be kind of sweet, You've got to put the time into it. Yeah, starting a pre-production too. I mean, you've got to write the thing. You've got to you've got to make sure you've got, you know, production managed, and it's it's it gets pretty crazy, especially when you have multiple day shoots. Um, my speciality is is producing and, and production management, so I have a habit of making sure all the actors are in the right places at the right time. Scheduling's been done. Props are in the right places. So so when you're on when you're dealing with smaller crews, the production manager kind of takes on every task at once. Yeah. So that gets pretty crazy. You focus more on the production videos, and not just like, "Hey, we've got a camera, let's shoot some this afternoon, let's make it up." Yeah, you know what I mean. You and put time into it. There's nothing wrong with that. I know a lot of friends of mine do the uh, do the webcam thing, or, or they just set up one camera on them and they and they just shoot the whole thing sitting in their living room. For me, I've always just really wanted to uh, step into more production side of things. I want to shoot something that, you know, that that can be entertaining, even if it's at even if it makes me look like a complete idiot. Like that's, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. The, the way I see it, if we can do a really big production and I look like a complete doofus, then I've done my job. Yeah. So you'd rather look like a doofus while making something awesome than yeah. making something half-assed and looking like a doofus because of that. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You brought up the interactive video. You've kind of become or are becoming kind of like the master of the interactive video. Well, that's that's bragging, but yes, I would prefer to call myself the king. You know what? The one thing I love about interactive videos is the fact that the, the audience, the viewer gets such a, they get a choice in, in kind of what's happening. Now, granted, usually the endings of all the videos end up similar or you get like a couple of different endings, but the more I do it, the more I learn that when people get to really experience something, not just watch it as a video, they actually get to uh, to kind of step into this character and kind of play the character themselves. They're a part of something. They're not just they're not just playing at something. They're actually a part of it. And I think that that's what interaction really gives a YouTube audience. So that's why I, I just absolutely adore it. I'm still going to dabble in the uh, web series that I'm creating, but I just right now I'm on a serious interactive kick, and I really want to see what comes to fruition because of it. Paco, where are you taking me? Don't worry about it. Okay. How do you get one of these kind of monuments when you die? I think you pay a lot of money. Oh, I'm out. Or you have a lot of money. I'm out again. Uh oh, never mind. So we're in a traffic jam. <laughs> the cemetery. In the cemetery. Let's move. Oh man, people are dying to get in here. <laughs> <laughs> so for your like Jimmy Smash vlogs, mm -hmm. do you do those pretty much every day? Uh, no. I mean, like, I, only when there's something interesting happening. Okay. I mean, like today. Uh, before I was, you know, going for my walk, I was watching football, so yeah. I wouldn't really smash blog that. You're right, but. there's nothing interesting happening today. Well, the neat thing about having a daily vlog actually makes you want to make your life more interesting. The one thing I find about shooting smash vlogs all the time is all of a sudden I'm willing to say yes to do something. It's like someone goes, hey, do you want to go to the pumpkin patch? And normally I'd be like, not really, you know, my leg kind of hurts today and I don't really feel like it. But now it's like, I can smash vlog that. Interesting. I yeah. can go and do something cool, and I feel like I'm living life a little more because of a vlog. But that's not to say that it has to be daily, because mine aren't. But I think that it just kind of helps people to do daily vlogs. I think it's not just them entertaining an audience. I think it's actually them becoming, you know, happier in life because they actually are willing more to say yes. Throughout your surgeries and stuff, you're still doing vlogs and still doing things like that. Well, and was that Im important to you to do? Just to kind of keep it up? Or was it kind of like a way to vent? Because a lot of people just like, look, I have time for this right now. I've yeah. got way more in my mind than dealing with this. I, uh, you know what? 
I've always tried to be as honest as I could be. Like my, my good friend Jory Karen and I had a big conversation about this once. Did just drop that name? Bam. Is it that name Bam. just drop right there? Yes. Sorry. That's Next time, bad. just say at Jory Karen. Before at, I, that's that's, that's how it makes me say it. <laughs> so we were having a conversation about it before, and, and I think that uh, I think that when it comes to if you're gonna put your life online, be honest about it. Like when I'm having a really bad day, like a really crappy day. I don't go out and, and tell everybody, look how bad a day I'm having. But I just don't vlog. However, if I'm going to be optimistic, if I can give hope to somebody, like maybe someone's going through something similar to what I'm going through, maybe someone knows somebody that's going some, through something similar like I'm what I'm going through, if that's the case, then I feel that um, I feel that making a vlog about it and, and showing people that I can be optimistic, and it gives them hope, and it makes, you know, it makes them kind of, you know, hey... That's possible. It doesn't mean I, I never feel down. I feel down all the time. Everybody does, but I try to I try to live my life as positively as I can, mm-hmm. and I find that whenever I'm holding a camera, I'm more positive. So it's as if they help me become happier and be more optimistic because I want to be optimistic for them, <laughs> and they want to see me be optimistic. Nice. Is there any people on YouTube who are just bitter, angry people? They just <laughs> vent, 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 and that's yes. the whole thing. Yeah. Yes, there are, and that's as far as that answer's going. <laughs> <laughs> my, my first negative comment came from a person, and I went to check them out. And their name was Jesus is not real one. Wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. But it, it surprised me that there's another Jesus is not real. <laughs> one. You couldn't get the, you couldn't just get Jesus is not real. You had yeah. to get the numerical yeah. addition there. All their thing was is they just go to different things and just tear a new a-hole mm-hmm. to each of these videos. And it's just like that's the, the, the faceless commentary of YouTube, I find. And yeah, you get to hide behind, you know, yeah. an- anonymity? An- an- anonymity? I think anonymity Anonym- is the word. An- you get to hide behind not letting people know who you are. Yeah. So you get to hide behind your invisibleness of your computer screen. Yeah. Everybody's the wizard now. Yeah, really. I haven't called everything. I mean, could you, would you believe that someone actually once called me fat? I mean, what? Are you serious? <laughs> Come on. But I, the most hateful comment I ever got, someone actually sent to me, and it was early on. I did a video with uh, with Andrew Huang for a, uh, it, was a, it was almost a cover of his song. And before I could, before I could sing it, uh, he punched me in the face. They said that I was so ugly that no one could love me and that I deserved to be hit like that 10 times or something like that. Oh. And it was really, really hateful. And, and I didn't need to jump. That is a squirrel yeah. running across. Well, Get out of here. I was I'm answering worried. questions. Yeah, geez. Don't, don't mar us with your tragedy. Yeah, really. <laughs> I, I find a lot, of, a lot of what I'm doing right now is building community. So when it comes to a really hateful comment, I have faith that everyday viewers of my channel they are the people that are going to jump in and leave the comments back like hey get out of here we don't want to see your comments they're going to thumbs it down so that it, it goes you know yeah. too many this comments yeah. got too comment. many negative yeah. um you know thumbs downs and whatnot and i think that that's really cool because that's them kind of protecting me from having to see that kind of negative you know hate so. yeah that is pretty rad I do have a lot of really cool online friends, and I, and I actually call them uh, friends. I mean, I know that there's, you know, that there's there's viewers and there's fans and there's audiences, and I try my best to the people that are that are you know subscribed to me and are always watching my um, are always watching my videos and my vlogs and stuff. I kind of I, I kind of just call them my friends because that's kind of how I feel about it. So um, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I, I, I mean, but to me, I, I can't help but think that it has to be good. Bastard. Oh man, that's a rad desk. We should take that desk. The glass front. That's a really that? nice desk. That is a nice desk. So, give me your life story in five words. Difficult ain't so hard, man. Nice. Very nice. I'm not sure if that made any sense, but that is my life. All right, dude. So, uh, I think here's your stop coming up. So, we'll just let you off here. Uh, we're like three miles from my house, Baco. That sounds good. All right. So, here you go. I don't even know where I am. Me neither. So, that makes two of us. Thanks for coming out. Really appreciate it. You're seriously just going to leave me at the... See you, Jimmy. Thank you. Hey, okay, gentlemen. Okay, so thanks for watching Riding Shotgun with Corduroy Paco. For my friend and guest, Jim Valen, check your mirrors. You've been recording, right? Yeah.